Hey, this is Andrew Brown. This fall along, we're going to take a look at VPC Lattice, which allows you to basically turn your services into microservices. I say services, but I just mean any kind of resource that it can target um, be can become a service. Let's see if we can set this up. Won't be something complicated, but it'll be something that we can start working with right away. I'm going to go ahead and type in VPC Lattice, and we'll make our way over here. And the idea is that it will create us a service network. So we'll go ahead and create ourselves a service network. I'm going to call this um, my lattice. And that seems fine here. We can choose any existing VPC lattice services. I don't have any yet. So we'll go ahead and go down here. I'm going to go ahead and add a VPC. I want to work with the default one here today. So that will be the 172.31.0.0. For network access, um, we'll just not authenticate. So basically things can easily resolve. For resource sharing, VPC Lattice integrates with uh, AWS RAM to enable resource sharing across your accounts. I'm not really worried about that today. We'll go ahead and create our service network and see if this is uh, pretty easy to start working with. So is this up yet? We have our VPC association here, so that's good. Um, so I guess the next thing is we need to do is associate some services. So in order to do that, we'll have to go ahead and create a service. So we'll have a service name. We'll just say web server. And this will be a simple web server. We can set up a custom domain. I'm not worried about that here today. We're going to say none for the service. We don't need to have any kind of auth type here. Um, and I'm going to ignore the resource sharing for now. We need to define a listener. This will be on HTTP port 80. Um, and we'll need a target group. We don't have one, so we'll have to create one. I'm surprised they don't let you do that right in place. Um, I know AWS says that everything's always like simple and then better later on, but I think AWS should do a better job of uh, making their services a bit easier to use because they're such a large company. There's really no excuse for it. We're going to make our way over to Lattice here, and we need to define a target group. So we'll go ahead and do that. I'm going to want to target instances. I'll just say web server, and we'll have HTTPS. This will be for port 80 because we're not going to be doing anything secure. Um, I don't care about which protocol it is. It's using the default subnet, and it is going to do a health check at uh, HTTP for port 80. So it looks fine to me. We'll go ahead and hit next. It wants to associate some instances, so I suppose we should spin up one. I'll go ahead and open up a new tab. We'll make our way over to GitHub, and I'll go over to AWS Examples. Again, never used Lattice before, but I've used um, things very similar to it. Uh, so for me, it's just like launching up a la application load balancer, or working with service mesh. So somewhere here, we have um, an instance that we can use. Probably the NACL one's going to be a good one because it has the ability to log in as well as it sets up a web server for us. So I'm going to go ahead and download this template before I do. If I have any other template files, I'm going to delete them out of the way. So we'll go ahead and download this. So that's now downloading. Great. I want to go back over to CloudFormation and we'll go and upload or create this new stack. So I'm going to go ahead and drag this one on over. Turns out I do have another template somewhere. I'm not sure where it is, but that's totally fine. And we'll go ahead and hit next. This will be my lattice service. And there's a few things we want to change here. I want this to be T3 micro. I want to make sure we choose the default subnet, default VPC. So we'll make our way back over here in a new tab over to, um, to here, to VPC. We'll go ahead and to go to VPCs and we'll grab the default VPC, which is the 172. We'll grab that, we'll make our way back. We'll paste this in. And I'm going to go back over to subnets. I'm looking for the 172 one. So we have 172, zero. This one seems like a good one here. I'll grab that one. And we'll go back to here and paste this one in. Paste. And we'll go next. I'm going to go all the way down the bottom, hit next. I'm going to go all the way down the bottom and hit acknowledge. We're going to go ahead and deploy this EC2 instance. We'll wait till it's done all right. All right, let's see if this is done. Um, we'll go ahead and give that a refresh. So it is done. Uh, I want to go over that instance. Just make sure that it is in a good working condition. 
Mm, does it need to have a public IP address? I'm not sure, but let's go ahead and take a look and make sure this works. Mm, don't see a website yet. Let's go make sure we switch this over to HTTP. Does this resolve? I think it's going to resolve. It's still working on those status checks, so... Try this again. We'll go check our security groups. Everything is open, so there shouldn't be an issue here. Maybe we're just being impatient, so we'll wait for the status checks to complete, all right? Oh, you know what? Within a second, it resolves, so that is good. Um, yeah, I'm not worried about the status checks. Let's go over to our target group. We're gonna uh, refresh here. We're going to register this one here. Um, available targets. We'll do that. We'll create the target group. Give it a moment here to create the target group. Not sure why it's so hard to make one, but we'll wait. All right, so it created it there. Um, down below, we have a registered target. It says the, hel uh, the health check has not been used. The target group is not configured to receive traffic. Interesting. Traffic from the service. What the heck does that mean? The target group is not configured to receive traffic from the service. Okay, how is that possible? <laughs> oh, you know what? It's because uh, we need to associate it over here. That makes sense. Um, so down below, we'll give this a refresh. Interesting, they don't have a little icon here, but we'll click that. Um, any additional rules? No, I'm not interested in that right now. We'll go ahead and hit next. We'll choose our VPC lattice network. Uh, we'll go ahead and hit next. Review it all. We'll go ahead and create that VPC lattice um, service. We'll give it a moment. And so my thought is, is that we're gonna have some kind of way of accessing um, this service over some kind of DNS address. Let's go back over to our target group and see if it goes healthy or not. It's healthy, okay, so we're in good shape then. Um, let's go back to our lattice service and we'll check box this on. And so my expectation, uh, my expectation here is that we have some kind of um, service address because, you know, that has to be a way for us to route stuff. I guess the question is like, why would it be external? Is it only for internal mutual um, uh, communication? Because if that's the case, we're gonna have to do a lot more to set that up. VPC Lattice Service defines routing mechanism uh, receives from services to its associ associated ones. Because what I'm thinking is that the idea is that we can just then um, use web server and then whatever it is to communicate with those individual services. I'm gonna go down over to service networks. Access. There's a domain name over here. Okay, so again, I, I thought maybe there might be a domain name or there might not be. And so if we go here, would it automatically route to that? How would it know to route to that? Uh, we'll go back over to our service network. And also if we had a service, then what would its domain be? Would it be like a subdomain on the end, uh, on the front of it? I'm gonna go into uh, this last network. Yeah, there's a domain name over here. So if we go back here and take a look, is there a difference or is it the same domain? Well, we'll try this one. I think it's the same though. All right, so let me see if we can actually access it, access anything from here. Just give me a moment. Yeah, so I, th I think it is exactly what I think it is, which is all these services are within the service network. And so that address that we're seeing is really something that would be used internally. So to, in order to test this, I think what we'd have to do is have another service and then we'd have to, I guess, ping the other one. So technically what we could do is um, spin up a second Confirmation template and test it, I suppose. It'd be nice if we had a custom domain as our domain is really, really long there. Um, but uh, let's go ahead and 
uh, try try something else here. So what I'll do is I will go ahead and try to spin up another service. Okay, this might not work, but uh, I figured we'll try try to give it a go anyway. And to have another service, I need to make my way over to CloudFormation. So I'm gonna go create a new stack. I'm going to bring over um, this template here. I'm gonna go next. I'm gonna say um, service two. We'll make this T3 micro. I'm gonna have to make my way over to VPC. We're gonna have to grab our VPC ID. which is here. And we're going to have to go back over to our subnets. And I think we were using this one before. Yeah, we were good. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit next. And we'll say next. And we'll acknowledge that. And so we will have this one deployed here in just a moment, okay? All right, so our second service is now spun up. Let's go ahead and um, go to the next step, which would be uh, making that other service available. So we would have to go over to VPC Lattice and we'll add another service. And I mean, it's another web server, but we'll just say create and we'll say web server two. And then down below, um, we'll keep on going down. It'd be really nice if we could have a custom domain, but um, could we do, if you uh, supply custom domain, you must configure DNS routing uh, after your service is created. Yeah, so you don't have to fiddle with more stuff to do that. But um, we'll work with the domains that we already have. We'll go ahead and hit next. Uh, we'll go ahead and hit, uh, add uh, for listeners. We need to create ourselves a new target group just specifically for this um, service. So we'll go ahead and create a new target group. This will be web server two. And we'll go to HTTP uh, and we'll say 80. We'll go on down below here. We'll hit next. Um, and we need to choose a second service, which is over here. We can tell based on its security group, not based on its name, that's for sure. And we'll go ahead and Oh, hold on, we'll have to include the pending below on port 80, create that target group. And now that target group exists, so we'll go back over to our VPC, we'll give this a refresh, we'll choose our other web server, we'll hit next, we'll say on port 80, um, we'll go next, we'll choose our VPC lattice, we'll hit next and we'll create the uh, Lattice VPC. So now my thoughts are we have these two services and the idea is that we should be able to use that internal domain in order to ping each other or at least get the website. So my expectation is that um, uh, the association address or whatever it was there is gonna be different. So yeah, we go to routing here. It doesn't really mean much to me. Let's go over to um, Lattice services here. And so these, are, I would expect these are different. And it looks like they are because I'm looking at these and they absolutely look different. Uh, let's go back to um, RC2 instances. We're gonna have to log into one of them. And I'm hoping that we can just do a, a simple wget to one of them and it'll just work. Fingers crossed. So we have two of these here. This is gonna be for, uh, well, this is the VPC. I wanted to go to EC2, sorry. There's four instances, as you can see, Baco is uh, working on something else for me here. But uh, what I'm looking for is security group here, because it's gonna tell me this is service two. So this will be service two. And this will this will obviously be service one. And so now the idea is that I will log into this one. sudo su hyphen ec2 user. And so now I'm logged in and we're gonna make our way back over to VPC Lattice. And we're logged into server web server one. So the idea is we wanna grab uh, web server two's uh, address there. This is kind of mucking up. So I'm sorry for clicking all over the place here. We'll go back to our service network and we'll click into my Lattice. And what I'm looking for is that domain name of the second one down here. Great, so we'll go back over to here and we'll type in wget hyphen Q O hyphen paste. 
And so that's what I'm thinking, that this should work. And it does. So we just uh, did some service to service communication in, uh, in a real use case. It'd be a way more complex than this because we would have, uh, I don't know if it has mutual TLS, but it wouldn't because I guess it's using HTTPS, but the idea is that there would be some additional steps uh, for security and um, we'd have a custom domain and there'd be more uh, interesting services like having a database. But this is a lot nicer than uh, Cloud Map and Service Network um, uh, that I used to use with AWS. So I really, I really do like that uh, this offering is here. But we are now done, so we have achieved what we want to do. I figured the best way to tear this down is to first tear down the services, and then we'll tear down the target groups and slowly work our way backwards. So we'll go here and say delete the service, confirm, and uh, something we have to do first has one or more associated networks. Okay, so we'll have to go to the network and remove the associations first. Delete service association, confirm. This is not gonna be fun to clean up. Confirm, and then we'll go down here and delete this one, confirm. Good, great. And then we'll make our way over to uh, our services and we'll tear down these services, delete, confirm, delete, confirm. So that will be good here in just a moment. Okay, so those are now gone. We can uh, get rid of our target groups, delete, confirm, it's registered with uh, a listener. So we'll go back to our service network and we'll go to our listeners, I suppose. Wherever those are. Um, I mean, that would have been through our service associations. Maybe the issue is that we, we have resources running. Why can't I delete that? Will it tell me again? Confirm. You cannot delete the target group after you deregistered all of it. Uh, uh, delete this target group after you deregister all of its targets. Target target groups have targets within it. Okay, so we'll go here, and we'll just deregister this, and then we'll go ahead and, and delete it. We'll make our way over to here, and we'll deregister it, and we'll delete it. Confirm. And so that is now gone. We'll go over to our service network and hopefully it'll just let us delete it. Yeah, of course, <laughs> Make it, making us do everything by hand. Such a great service, but like could they've made this a little bit easier. It's a little bit silly, AWS. And uh, refresh this. Great, can I now delete this? Refresh. Delete the service network, confirm. And I'll make my way over to EC2. We will, actually we'll make our way over to CloudFormation. We'll delete this stack. And we'll go over here and delete this stack. And we'll wait for that to complete. All right, so those are torn down, and I guess that's basically everything as we didn't create a VPC in this one, and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.